or dream of taking early retirement. A tax-efficient stocks and shares ISA from John Lewis can help you prepare for all the big milestones to come. Little moments can build big futures. Go to johnlewisfinance.com to find out more. As with all investing, your capital is at risk. Tax treatment depends on individual circumstances and may change in the future. John Lewis Investment Services are provided by Nutmeg Saving and Investment Limited. Nick Ferrari at breakfast on LBC. With Motorway, where dealers compete to give you the best price for your car. Eight minutes to eight, a look ahead to the spring statement later with Conservative MP and chair of the Covid recovery group, Mark Harper. But Roy Manchester has been struggling to get through. We did actually think, hoped we'd speak for you right at the top of the show, but we think we've got you this time. Your view on the sanctions, Roy, should, we have, uh, should the whole West have moved quicker? Good morning to you. Good morning, Nick. Yeah, I think the horse has bolted on this one, Nick, to be fair. Mm-hmm. Um, I think having... Uh, I'm not sure if you've had a little look at Russia today recently. I have uh, but not, there's an article no. on, there on, the, uh, on the website on the 18th of March, clearly outlining uh, their intention to align with China, um, Russia, uh, obviously citing Russia's divorce from the West. Mm-hmm. I think they've ditched everything in the West now, um, and they're clearly mapping out that alignment with China economically. And the talk on there potentially... Uh, well, I don't know if president, the Chinese well. President Xi, Xi is ready to do that deal, if you read well, what his views of uh, the problems in Ukraine are. Sure. I mean, they've clearly abstained and, and, and maintained their position. Um, but as I say, clearly from articles on Russia today, um, it looks as though that they are mapping out their intention to uh, align greater with China. Um, and might, yeah, bearing it, in mind, he's built up his goal. I mean, I'd, I'd like to go out with Jennifer Aniston, but it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Well, I think it would be quite interesting for this Russian state media to obviously cite these uh, these articles without China's consent. Well, of course, that, mate, give me a favour. R- Russia today can write what they like. It doesn't have to be substantiated in any way, shape or form. They could say that they're going to ally with the whole of the world. Again, it doesn't mean it's true. But, Roy, thank you. I wasn't aware of Russia today, and I'm grateful for the input, so thank you for that. We must turn, though, to matters at home. It is, of course, the spring statement or mini-budget, whichever you prefer. 12.30 day, full coverage here on LBC. What might we be expecting, particularly on a business front? Let's turn to Mark Harper, Conservative MP, and chairs the COVID recovery group of Conservative MPs. OK, to continue to fuel the recovery, Mark Harper, what would you like to hear? Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, uh, Nick. Well, I think, look, the, the Chancellor needs to do a number of things today. He's obviously said that he wants to, he understands the pressures facing both consumers and business uh, and wants to do what he can to help them. But I think actually the conversation you've just been having about what's been going on in uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine means that the outlook for the coming year is very uncertain and what he needs to be able to do is is keep some resilience in the system to be able to deal with whatever shocks are thrown at us and we saw just in uh, last month in February he found nine billion pounds of taxpayers money to help deal with the uh, energy price rise that's going to to hit consumers uh, uh, on the 1st of April. It's important we keep some of that headroom available for that. So I think he's going to have to balance all of those things when he sets out his statement uh, uh, at lunchtime. Where are you on the proposed increase in corporation tax? Key, I would argue, to recovery from many businesses in this country. Well, I think it's it's worth remembering the Chancellor did two things, of course. Yes, uh, corporation tax uh, is going up, uh, but he's also, he also set out, you'll remember, the super deduction to incentivise investment for businesses to enable growth. So I think what's important on the business side of the of the, uh, the shop, if you like, is that businesses are incentivised to grow uh, and invest. Um, uh, and I know they very much welcome the super deduction. And so looking at how we can in- get businesses to invest, I think, is very important. But they can't welcome the lift from 19p in the pound to 25p, can they, Mr Harper, in all honesty? No, look, we've had to make some very difficult decisions. You, but you I still think, support uh, that then, uh, Mr Harper? Yes, look, over the last couple of years, we've we found a very significant amount of money to deal with the, the, the once-in-a-300-year shock uh, to the economy from the pandemic, and I think that was right to borrow that money to protect millions of jobs and, and tens of thousands of businesses to make sure they're still here and able to fire on all cylinders post-pandemic. Um, but people that want to spend money on important public services, the health service, social care, all of the other things. You've got to pay for these things. You can't just keep borrowing money. So I think if people want to 
cut taxes or people want to spend more money, they've got to set out how they're going to pay for it. So the Chancellor's got to balance those things. But he, he has he had, set out, you're aware, this so-called f- fiscal headroom or whatever, the sort of 20 or £30 billion, pound, whichever, that, that's a sort of unexpected flip or boost that was, wasn't was due to come his way. Surely, if you want to stimulate business, you review the 25p, the lift to 25p. Well, look, it, it, it will be the case, I'm sure, that there's some increase in tax revenues from the fact that, that there's been higher inflation. But also, you've got to look at the cost pressures on the other side of the, the ledger, as it were. Um, in, increases in inflation and interest rates mean that we're going to see bigger debt interest. We saw a big debt interest payment yesterday. Obviously, we had to borrow a huge amount of money to deal with the pandemic. And the Chancellor also needs to make sure, because we've got a very uncertain outlook for this year because of what's going on with Russia and Ukraine, but he keeps some level of resilience in the system, you know, so that if we get another shock in the autumn, for example, to energy prices, he wants to have something left in the tank so that the government can do what it can to help people. If you spend all the money now, then we leave ourselves with no ability to cope with shocks in the future, and that wouldn't be responsible. So he's got to balance all of those things, and I'm confident he'll set out a balance package when he sets out his statements at lunchtime. Lastly, you won't need reminding, it was two years ago today that the Prime mm. Minister effectively closed down the country due to COVID or coronavirus. Yep. Mr. Albert, what do you remember about that day and how do you look back at these last two years? Well, I remember it very clearly, as I'm sure uh, your listeners do. Uh, I think for me, it, it reminds us that you don't know what's going to get thrown at you. Uh, something completely unexpected can come out of left field and government has to make very difficult decisions and it has to balance a whole range of things. We had to think about public health, we had to think about the economy, we had to put measures in place to deal with it. So I think it just demonstrates that governing is about making difficult choices and trying to get things right. And I think where we've got to on COVID now, we've got the economy opened, we're protecting people through vaccination and our antivirals. uh, And that means that we've got the economic resilience to deal with future shocks. uh, And those are the challenges facing the government, I think, in the months and years to come. Great for your time. I'm sure we'll speak again as we continue to recover from COVID. Mark Harper, Conservative MP, chairs the COVID recovery group of Conservative MPs. Let's have it in an extra 30 seconds or so. Mehdi in Chorley, a quick reaction from you on the sanctions. Mehdi, good morning. Uh, I I don't think that they were done kind of too late. I just think it was just badly managed. But I think in regards to the spring budget, what I was telling your your my colleague, your my researcher, was, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. 